I don't actually love tech news. I host this show because I made a Faustian bargain with a bespectacled trickster demon. His name was Carlos, he was divine. I thought it was Riley Murdoch. That's my real name, ha ha ha! The graphics card version of what Riley called one kid in a trench coat in the Christmas special is back. Two partner models of Nvidia's RTX 4070 Ti have been spotted at Chinese retailers and as you can tell from my face, I could be more thrilled. When converted to US dollars, the prices of both models are over $1,000, though we don't know if these prices include tariffs. It's important to note that the 4070 Ti has 12 gigabytes of memory, just like the unlaunched 4080 12 gigabyte, and the partner card's pricing aligns with the 899 USD MSRP of the 4080 12 gigabyte too. And to be frank, that's because it is the 4080 12 gigabytes, you know? What? That's right, gamers. You got angry and told Nvidia, hey, I'm not gonna stand for this pitiful price to performance from a card that shouldn't even be called a 4080. And Nvidia heard you. They heard you so hard that they changed the name and literally nothing else. That's power to the players. So go ahead and buy every 4070 Ti you can get your little hands on when it launches. Let Nvidia know that you're okay with being ripped off as long as they're slightly more honest about it. They shouldn't even call it a Ti. It's called a tie. Yeah. North Korean hackers, yes, they have computers down there, are stealing millions by pretending to be crypto investors. Move over, Sam Bankman Fried. There's a new crypto fraudster wonder kid. Blue Noroff, which is part of North Korea's state sponsored Lazarus Group, has been targeting venture capital firms as well as crypto startups and banks. By creating 70 fake domains mimicking well-known Japanese companies, they were able to trick victims into downloading malware that drains their crypto accounts. Their malware can bypass Windows Mark of the Web, the security flag that causes warnings to pop up when opening files downloaded from the internet. And definitely not also the title of my Mark Rober fan fiction where he becomes Spider-Man and we totally don't kiss. <laughs> Mark Disrober. Hey. Ooh. Speaking of, some South Korean foreign policy experts can kiss their privacy goodbye because North Korean hackers have targeted at least 892 of them with ransomware, allegedly the first time the North Korean government has used ransomware, but reports say that they like it. They're digging it. <laughs> it's times like this when I feel like society could use a smart, handsome engineering type that fights crimes with a combination of spider-like powers and intelligently constructed booby traps who also has soft, pillowy lips is an opinion that I've read on the internet and definitely isn't mine and it wouldn't be Elon Musk you at this point. You can't prove it? Some Pixel 7 owners are reporting that their phone's camera glass is spontaneously shattering, which is way worse than my problem with the fingerprint reader, reader just sucking. Many of the users that share this problem report similar stories. They pulled their Pixel 7 out of their pocket and suddenly the phone's camera had cracks in the glass. Not to be confused with cracks in your ass. Glass cracks. While this issue was first posted on Reddit two months ago, the same issue has been reported on Google's support forums and Twitter more recently. The exact number of cases is unclear. Just like the glass. And so is the cause. Possible suspects range from some sort of pressure point, the cold weather, or the shape and size of pants pockets. It's, it's big pants that's <laughs> taking the pixel down. All factors, which to be fair, Google could never have anticipated. I mean, they only have all of our data. Doesn't you know how big your pockets were. Doesn't Google own pants? Fortunately, Google seems to be taking the issue seriously and reaching out to those affected on Twitter, which is great since Marquez Brownlee just crowned the Pixel 7 the phone of the year. And it's never a good idea to blow a podium finish with a controversy after the fact. Oscar Pistorius might sue for copyright infringement. And so might Lance Armstrong. Now it's time for the quick bits, brought to you by Secret Lab, maker of chairs engineered to keep you incredibly comfortable for long hours at work and play. The Titan Evo 2022, for example, which will be comfy in 2023, keeps you feeling comfortable for longer hours with their four-way lumbar support, ultra comfortable line of different seat materials, and more. All chairs come with up to a five-year extended warranty and a 49-day return policy. And right now, you can save up to $250 using their extended Christmas sale, it never ends. Today, using the link down below. It'll end at some point. It's still Christmas. Chinese New Year's sale. And Hanukkah, baby. The only thing quicker than these bits is Mark Rober <laughs> with web shooters. <laughs> well, wait, I didn't mean <laughs> stupid sexy Rober. The iPhone 14's crash detection is really good. Too good, according to the Colorado Sun. 
Last weekend, 911 dispatchers in <laughs> Summit County had to deal with 71 automated crash notifications from skiers' iPhones, none of which were actually emergencies. Unfortunately, these calls still take time to verify as accidental. So I'm sorry, little Timmy. I know you can't find your parents, but Karen's iPhone fell out of her pocket on a black diamond and our hands are tied. US military bioscanners were bought on eBay for $68, almost nice, by a group of hackers. The group called Chaos Computer Club, the CCC. CCC mom, I'm doing cool things. They found names, photos, and biometric data for over 2,000 people on the device, including at least two US military personnel, the rank of whom we don't know. The club also called getting the data downright boring due to how easy it was. Come on, guys, give them a challenge. We want them to be hackers, not slackers. I get paid for this. Amazon started delivering packages via drone last week, just in time for Christmas. Customers in Lockford, California, and College Station, which is a town in Texas, can experience Drones descending into their backyards, hovering over the ground, and dropping little payloads. And that's Hanukkah, baby. <laughs> so if you live in one of these cities, there's never been a better time to convince a loved one that they've just woken up from a decade-long coma. And the robots are trying to kill us. A longitudinal study has found that Facebook addiction can make people with depression even more depressed. Hi, the, Mom. The findings are supported by how our viewers watching on Facebook are feeling after reading that headline. Researchers found out overuse of the meta-owned platform can drastically reduce a person's sense of self-worth. But I don't know about that. None of the people I know that overuse Facebook are depressed. They're just angry. Some might say dangerously. And some players of the game High on Life are getting stuck in a virtual Applebee's. The game, developed by the studio founded by Rick and Morty co-creator Justin Roiland, features a mission near the end of the story that set inside a restaurant called Space Applebee's, based on the real life US franchise. And just like real life, some players are unable to leave the restaurant, except instead of the honey barbecue boneless wings keeping them inside, it's a horrible, horrible glitch. Glipsh. Also boneless. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. Not sponsored by Applebee's. The space I neighborhood. I don't like diarrhea. And you'll never be able to escape our tech news because you'll be back here on Friday. You'll see. You'll all see. <laughs> <laughs>